Well, fortunately, because we have scripture, we actually know why God created the first family. We have it right in the first page of the Bible in Genesis. So let's look at exactly what God was thinking when he created this thing called the family. And again, this is not our idea. This was his idea. So let's try to understand what was in his heart. So this is what we read in Genesis. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So if you think about what is happening here, when you look at this, you're asking yourself, what is this thing called a family? Now, if you look at that definition in verse 28, a family is an entity designed to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill, to subdue, and to rule. If you look at that definition, you cannot get the modern idea of family. What you get is a, a completely different idea of family, one that is multi-generational. You can see it right there. They have to multiply. One that is a team. This, was not, this mission was not given to one person or one generation. It was given to the multi-generational family. So it's a multi-generational team. And then they were given a mission to fill, subdue, and rule. So they were given a, a mission. So th these are the ways we think about family. So I'm going to give you guys a really cohesive definition of both of these ideas. What is a modern family? How, how, what's the easiest way to understand the way that we think about family in Western culture? And I would say, in, in a phrase, we think a family is a springboard for individual success. That's a good family. I want to launch my kids out, and I want them to individually be successful, forget about me, their grandparents, and then start over again. That's our vision for the good family. I was having a conversation with a a Christian leader of a family ministry. And I said, look, I need to explain to you that there's a couple of different ways to think about family. Now, first of all, there's the kind of a family that where the goal is to launch our kids as individuals in the, in the most uh, independent way possible. He's like, 100% yes. Our entire ministry is dedicated to that kind of family. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's another kind of family. <laughs> like I'm, I was actually trying to you know, explain to him a contrasting idea, but he had just said, yeah, that, that is what we believe. As a Christian family ministry, that's our attempt. Now, this idea, what he was describing, uh, is, uh, is I think part of this the problem. It's broken. So if I were to describe what is a biblical family in very simple terms, what will you see there in Genesis 1, what God had in his heart and his mind when he created the family, I would say it's a multi-generational team on mission. A multi-generational team on mission. Do you guys see how different these are? the springboard for individual success versus a multi-generational team on mission. Let me make it even more simple for you. I'll break it down to two words, the word for the Western family and a word for the biblical family. When we are raising a family and they are launched out, what do you call the couple after their kids have left? Empty nesters. Okay. So the Western idea of family is the nest. The biblical idea of family is a team. I don't believe God ever intended for us to build nests, that this is not a great analogy for a family. I'm not building a nest. That's not my intention as a father and as a grandfather. I want to build a multi-generational team on mission. I want to build a family that's fruitful, that multiplies, that fills and subdues and rules. That is a different idea. So you can always tell what people believe by what analogy most resonates with them when they think about that concept. And the fact that the, the analogy that most resonates with us is the nest tells me everything I need to know about the way we think about family in the West. And you can understand why fathers also struggle really being excited about building nests. This is not a particularly uh, uh, exciting idea for, for men. But if you think about men are designed to build and lead teams, and this is why so many fathers will go and follow other teams. They'll join teams at work. They'll follow teams in sports. They are obsessed with the idea of leading or, or somehow vicariously experiencing the, the, the teamness. They love teams. They never knew that their family was a team. If somebody would have told them that they're actually building a team as a family, I think this would completely change the way they saw their family. This, so this is why I think this is at the root of the problem. If, if you were to somehow just erase from the mind of a father, his idea of fatherhood, and just put coach 
right, in that spot, I think you would see a 10x increase in the kind of fatherhood. In fact, if, if a mother were to sign her children up for a sport this season, she will expect more intentionality, more, uh, more investment from that, that child's coach than that, from that child's father. Why is that? Well, because we understand coaching. We understand that a coach has to look at a player and figure out how to lead them, how to invest in them. But we don't know what fatherhood is because we think we're building nests. 